Well, tuition protests are gaining momentum in Canada's Quebec province. This time, it's not going to be just students, but teachers are also taking part in the action. Their union is calling on the government to hire more temporary teachers to help their colleagues manage their workload. University instructors have threatened to stop working if their demands are not met. Quebec has been gripped by unrest in recent months. Student protesters are angry at the government's plan to increase tuition fees by over 80 percent. They've been clashes between police and protesters. Thousands have been arrested since February. Well, joining us now uh, from uh, Calgary uh, via Skype is our correspondent Joshua Blake. Need to tell us a bit more about the situation there in Canada. Uh, Joshua, uh, it seems that the protest movement is growing with the addition of teachers. Tell us a bit more about that. Yes, well, obviously over the last few months, uh, students have taken to the streets in Canada in order to demonstrate against uh, austerity measures that have been implemented against them in the form of tuition hikes. And obviously, professors and academicians and teachers have quite an intimate relationship with students. And when they see the state ruthlessly and uh, brutally and unjustly cracking down upon those students who they have an intimate relationship with, those politicians who are visiting that upon the students aren't very popular. And so now uh, the government is trying to find a way of enticing the students back to uh, university by, by offering them a, a window to, uh, to resume their classes in August. And, of course, this will re require extra pedagogy and tutelage. And the teachers have said, well, we'll come back to work as long as you're willing to pay us uh, for the extra time that we'll be putting in in the month of August. And so now there's a stalemate, not only between the students and the politicians, but now also between the uh, academicians and the uh, politicians. And so, obviously, the, um, the professors and uh, teachers are standing in solidarity with the students. And that's been reflected in a new phase of um, dispute that's beginning to unravel. Uh, the protests now have pervaded throughout Canada. In Vancouver this week, there were more uh, protests, students coming on the street, uh, identifying with those who have uh, you know, lit a path for them to follow in, in the province of Quebec. And uh, you know, th this isn't uh, getting any better from the perspective of the politicians. In addition, there's a scandal this week in, in Montreal pertaining to the very politicians who are cracking down on the students being implicated in corruption and uh, mafia-style dealing. Uh, Jacques Ducheneau, the former chief of the Montreal police, came out and made quite inflammatory a accusations against all the political parties for having connections to the mafia and to gangsters. And so uh, the, the credibility of the politicians is at an all-time low. And probably the teachers' unions are viewing this as an opportune moment for them to try to uh, get uh, decent pay for their representatives. Right, Joshua, also what the protests are about is anger over the law that was passed by the province of Quebec uh, that restricts the right to protest, specifically in light of this movement that has just sprung up. Now, I understand that uh, students had filed an appeal with courts, which was rejected as well. Tell us a bit more about that. Indeed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, a, a chap named Francois Roland, who calls himself the Chief Justice, of the Supreme Court of Quebec helped to uh, continue these injustices that are being imposed upon the students by the state by refusing to strike down some of the most controversial articles contained in the controversial Bill 78, which was enshrined in mid-May. The students actually were considering asking this very judge to refuse himself to stand down because he is someone who has made politicized statements. And uh, the decision by the judiciary this week to allow Bill 78 to continue as the law when every legal analyst practically is uh, denouncing it as unconstitutional because Canada has had a constitution since 1982 which defends every citizen's right to have freedom of assembly and freedom of speech and Bill 78 is an affront on those very rights. And so all the legal analysts are coming together and saying Bill 78 is unconstitutional but the judiciary, of course the judges are appointed by the politicians, so the judiciary, surprise, surprise, is standing uh, with the politicians who, as I say, have now been revealed this week as having mafia connections. And so uh, students, organized students uh, are not to be tolerated by the Canadian state, but organized crime is to be tolerated, as the, the revelation from the uh, former police chief revealed this week.
All right, we're going to have to leave it there. That was our correspondent Joshua Blakeney uh, reporting from Calgary there via Skype. Joshua, thank you for that update. We'll obviously be getting back to Joshua throughout the course of events that take place uh, throughout Canada. Well, moving on now, the worsening economic outlook and lack of jobs in the U.K., Push an unemployed person to extreme lengths. The 48-year-old man set himself on fire outside a